and verse 24. Praise God. One of the songs that we sang today goes right along with my message today that I believe will help someone because we all face a moment that we feel like we have been besieged. Everybody say besieged. 2 Kings chapter 6 and verse 24. And it came to pass after this that Benadad, king of Syria, gathered his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria, and behold, they besieged it until a donkey's head was sold for fourscore pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried a woman unto him, saying, Help me, my lord, O king. Verse 28, he said, What? Elleth thee, verse 29, she said, We boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she hath hid her son. Things were really bad in Samaria to the point that there was cannibalism going on. Lives were being taken. People starving, thirsty, and hungry. But in 2 Kings chapter 7, after the king pretty much threw his hands up and said, I can't do anything. The prophet Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time. Everybody say, Tomorrow about this time. Shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then the Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shalt not eat thereof. Lord, today I pray that you would speak to each of us today to understand, to be encouraged that no matter what we face from the enemy, when we are besieged, God help us to realize that the miracle is on the way. It may be tomorrow. But Lord, I pray today that we would rise up together and speak it by faith. That things are going to change. That things are not going to be like they were yesterday. I thank you for your word. Help us to apply it to our lives. Touch every heart and soul that's in this sanctuary. Encourage your people today. In the name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen. Praise God. Shake hands with somebody and tell them the miracle is on the way. Praise God. Praise God. Second Kings chapter 6 <clears throat> is an amazing story, an intriguing story, about a city called Samaria that was being attacked by Syria and Benadad. Besiege is to surround a place with armed forces in order to capture or to force its surrender to lay siege to, to be hemmed in by hostility. Samaria was facing the Syrians, led by Benadad, that had surrounded the city with one goal in mind, and that was to kill, to steal, and to destroy. To besiege was to cut off all of the supplies, all of the food, all of the water that normally came into that city. And it happened by the army actually squeezing and by waiting patiently to all of the supplies, all of the food, all of the water that was already in the city that it would be diminished to the point that it would bring a moment of desperation, mental stress and fatigue, anguish and fear, which eventually would lead to their surrender and defeat to the enemy. Samaria was besieged. It became so bad that a donkey's head was an expensive delicacy, and dove's dung was a desired appetizer on that day. Verse 26, a woman cried out, Help me, king, my son, we have eaten him. It was a desperate situation. It was a hostage mentality, a siege mentality. 
I believe that there's a moment in all of our lives that we come to a point that we're surrounded by the enemy. And the enemy starts whispering in our ears saying, you know what, it's not worth it to go to church one more time. It's not worth it to pray one more time. There's an enemy that says, you know what, you need to just give up today. You're surrounded by the demons of hell. I'm talking about pressure. Does anybody know what I'm preaching about today? The pressures of life that began to squeeze upon you that can take your very breath. That can bring discouragement to a point that you just want to throw up your hands and say enough is enough. Proverbs 24 and 16 is an encouragement to me today. It says, for a just man falleth seven times and rises up again. I want to tell you this morning that if you have fallen, it's time for you to get back up. Amen? A righteous man doesn't stay down on the ground. But he says, you know what? I may be besieged today, but I'm going to get back up on higher ground. Amen? Get back up and keep fighting. It's the siege mentality. Lay a hold of the city. It was the same with the children of Israel. When Moses was leading the people from captivity... To the promised land. The situation was grim for Moses and the children of Israel. But there was a point that they came to that said, you know what? Wouldn't it be better if we went back to captivity? To being enslaved? To being abused? I know that you've promised great things, Moses. But I believe that I want to go back to where I used to be. That's a siege mentality. The situation was grim in this city. The pressure was on. The city was being squeezed by the enemy. By a patient, deathly tactic of the enemy. It was out of the king's hands. He was overwhelmed and he was helpless. Nothing that he could do was going to work. There was not a voice of encouragement that came from the king's mouth. It was a desperate situation. But the Bible says that there was a prophet of God by the name of Elisha that had a word from the Lord. Amen? Elisha basically said, blessings are coming. Within 24 hours, things are going to change drastically. There's going to be some trading going on at the gate that you're not going to believe. God is about to pour out the blessings from heaven. The city was under siege. They were held hostage by the enemy. But the prophet said, he said, good things are coming. Can I tell you that's the hardest thing to do when things are going bad? When you are besieged by the enemy. Anybody know what I'm preaching about today? When things are grim, when there's nothing but a bad report, it's not easy to stand up and say good things are coming. But I'm thankful for a prophet that stood up and said, it's coming. Amen. In less than 24 hours, the victory is coming to this city. The times that we have to show our faith and our character and have to circle the wagons, those times we find out what we're made of. Amen. It's when it seems like there's no hope and there's no answer. And you don't know where the blessing's going to come from and the miracle that you so desperately need. There are moments that you're going to have to circle the wagons and say, you know what, I may have to fight to the death, but I'm in this for the long haul. Praise God. But here's the reality. Psychologically, it wears on you. It squeezes on our spiritual storehouse. There's a storehouse that we have. It's built up. It's increased. It's, it's raised on a Sunday morning service like this at the Life Center. We feel like we could take on hell with a water pistol right now. This is a good moment. But I'm telling you this week, there's no telling what you're going to face. When the pressure comes, when the enemy comes against you and starts to squeeze against that spiritual storehouse... There has to be something within us that's willing to stand up and to say it may be bad on this Tuesday, but tomorrow is coming. Elisha spoke faith. He spoke prosperity. We need to be careful what comes out of this mouth. 
I don't like being around negative people. But I like to have people call me and, and talk to me and say, I'm praying for you. Don't give up. I know things are bad and you're down and discouraged. But there's something about an encouraging word. Does anybody know what I'm preaching about this morning? In spite of being besieged, church, you're not defeated. Be not weary, the Bible says, in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. It's not a time to faint. It's a time to wake up and say, you know what? I'm going to keep fighting. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep prophesying. Speak faith. King said, I, I can't really do anything. I, I know it's desperate. It's a desperate situation for this city. Horrible consequences because of the enemy that was squeezing and putting the pressure on. The good thing is that the walls were still standing. The city was still holding strong. They felt like they were at wit's end, and they were. Starvation. Water running thin. Supplies cut short. They were besieged by the enemy. Praise God. The king said, I can't do anything. Sometimes we turn to the wrong people for help. Sometimes... Maybe all the time we need to look up unto the hills from which cometh our help. Our help still comes from the Lord. Amen. Man will fail you. Friends will let you down. But I'm telling you there's a friend on Friends Day that sticketh closer than a brother. His name is Jesus. He's here to give you victory today. Through the besieged moment that you may be fighting. The Apache Indians were some of the greatest guerrilla fighters in North America. Why? Because they were patient. They were patient. They would wait in the hot sun. They would surround their enemy until supplies diminished. Until there was no food left. Until there was no water that was left. Until finally the enemy would surrender or be overcome. The enemy works the same way. He desires to surround you. He desires to put the pressure on you. He desires to put the squeeze on you. I don't care if you're a teenager today, a college student, a young married, or a senior citizen. We all have the same adversary. That's right. We have an enemy that desires to destroy you. He studies. He scouts for a different method. He'll try one thing. If it doesn't work, you may have a peaceful time saying, you know what? All is well. It may be that the devil is backed up and he's studying, waiting to approach you one more time and to besiege your soul. But I want you to understand that 1 John 3 and 8 says the Son of God was manifested that we might destroy the works of the devil. Praise God. The siege mentality, it'll make you want to give up on your Christianity and your walk with God. But I want to encourage somebody today, I don't care what you're going through, God is still with us. Amen? If God be for us, who can be against us today? God is greater. He's more powerful. Hallelujah. Let's thank Him today. Let's thank Him today for the hope that we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's the siege mentality. Being surrounded. Even in Bible times, it's amazing how man's weak mentality, in spite of that, God was able to perform a miracle. God was able to intervene on behalf of men and women and prophets. I believe it's important this morning that we develop a tough mental attitude. A spirit that says, you know what, I may have faltered halfway across the bridge, but I'm going to get back up if I fall seven times as a righteous man. I'm going to get on the other side of the bridge, and I'm going to get my victory and my blessing from the Lord. Praise God. We need a man of God in our life. You need a pastor in your life. I pray that most of you call me your pastor. I know I'm human and I have my faults, but you need a voice in your life that speaks faith and encouragement where there's accountability. Amen? I need a man of God in my life, which I'm accountable to. 
I need a voice that speaks faith into my life. Amen? When I'm discouraged, when I'm enslaved by the past, aren't you thankful that we can call on the name of the Lord in the moments that we're besieged by the enemy? Hear it this morning. You're not defeated. You may be broken and tore down this morning, but you're not defeated. Praise God. But it's the hostage mentality. Moses. I mentioned him earlier, but he had to stand with faith in the midst of a siege mentality of people always looking back. You, you said there's a promised land out here, but you know what? That's a siege mentality. I hear what you're saying, Moses, and I know it was hard work, but if you don't mind, I think I'm just going to go back to being a slave and being whipped every day. I hear what you're saying, Moses, but they were held hostage by their past. There comes a point in your life that you've got to let go of the past. I don't care if you feel like you're besieged beyond measure today. God is greater, amen? God has more power. Praise God. Don't fall into the same trap. Keep moving straight ahead. It's one foot in front of the other, amen? You squeeze me long enough, devil. You pinch me hard enough. You pressure me too much. I'm going to pull out a can of kick you in the teeth. You thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? Amen. It's time that we kick him in the teeth today. Amen. Hallelujah. Stand strong. Have a made up mind. I'm going to keep walking. I'm going to keep trusting. I'm going to keep kicking. Besieged or not, I'm in it for the long haul. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time to take a bite out of crime. That's right. Sometimes you got to stand up and fight for yourself. Besieged or not. I heard what the prophet said. He said tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's not easy to hang on to that kind of faith. We want the miracle right now. Right in this altar call. Don't get me wrong. It can happen. But there was a group of people that had to wait at least 24 hours before prosperity came, before the answer came from God. Sometimes you have to wait just a little bit, amen? But I want to encourage you this morning, listen to the word of the Lord. The promise is going to be fulfilled. Your miracle is coming, amen? Your blessing is going to be poured out. I don't care how besieged that you feel this morning, God is with you. And the answer is coming. If you believe that this morning, let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Praise God. We've got to stand on the word of the Lord. That's right. Scripture says that he will never leave you nor forsake you. Besieged or not, I'm still a child of the king. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. Besieged or not, I'm going to get my blessing. I'm going to get my victory today. This story goes on. And I preached about this last year. But it's good to go back. There were four leprous men at the entrance at the gate. Everybody say four lepers. Not four leopards. Four lepers. A horrible disease. These four lepers at the gate, they said, Why set we here until we die? Here's our choices. My friend, my friend, here's what we're going to do. We've got three choices. If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die. Not a very good forecast. If we go back, we're going to die. And if we sit still here, we die. Not a very encouraging word. But now therefore come and let us fall into the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, if. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. Multiple choice. What are we going to do? I don't know about you, leper friend, but I'm not going back. I'm not staying right here at the gate. I'm going forward. 
I'm going beyond. I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to step out by faith. Amen? Did you know that Henry Ford, some of the first models that he produced for Ford, they had no reverse. There was no turning around. But there was turning around. There was no going in reverse. There was something about that Ford. It was appealing, but you had to keep going that way. I love that mentality, amen? I don't know about you, but I want to be a curb hopper, amen? I want to keep going forward. I love the mentality that says, I don't have a reverse. All I know is to have faith in God and to trust Him that He will supply my need. I love that. No reverse Christianity. Praise God. It's an amazing story that these four lepers, they started marching. Amen. If you don't know the story, just real quickly, they started marching toward the enemy's camp. And the Bible says that the enemy thought when they heard the sound that it was an army that was coming to defeat them. Isn't it amazing what God does when you take a step of faith? Amen. When you step out and say, you know what? I'm going forward. I may die. Esther said it herself. I may die, but I'm going to keep the faith. I'm going to keep trusting in God. Amen. There's some of you that need to step out this morning and say, I may be besieged, but I'm walking forward. Can you hear it enemy today? God is on my side. I will be victorious. As I step forward in Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's praise Him this morning. There's faith in the house. Hallelujah. I believe this message with all of my heart. Besieged, but not defeated. Cast down, but never destroyed. Besieged, but I'm going to be marching. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm not going to give up. If I die, I die. But I'm going to go forward. Praise God. When you move, God moves with you. Take comfort in that, my friend. He's with you. You may lose some things in your life. Serving God. This is not a cakewalk. It's not an easy thing to do to be an overcomer. And to be more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ our Lord. You may lose some things along the way. You may lose your hair. Like Brother Puck and Brother Sparks. Brother Gangadine. Your hair may turn gray in a matter of months like mine. You may lose your color. But you know what? Keep the faith. Can I tell you whatever you have to give up in serving God. We serve a God of recompense. Whatever you lose serving Him and having faith, I'm telling you there is a blessing that will come. There is power that will come from on high. Besieged or not, I'm going to keep the faith. Hallelujah, Jesus. God does not overlook faithfulness. Your mentality is so very important this morning. There's only so much you can do in the flesh. You'll never get your victory until you are spirit-filled, my friend. You can come in this place and praise and worship God, but there is a moment that you need to surrender and say, God, I need you in my heart. I need you to fill me today with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Some people say, I just can't get my victory. I keep going back to that junk. You just don't have enough of the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. You need to tap into the power source this morning. Amen. Under siege. Praise God. Get past the siege mentality. Praise God. This is not just a pep talk today. It's a spiritual battle that we're in. Problems come. Nobody else knows what I'm preaching about. Stress comes. Anybody know about the pressures of life that squeeze you and bring you to your knees? It's bad. You know what? It's not over. It may be tomorrow. But listen to the voice of the Lord that's speaking to your heart today. There's good times that are coming. I know it's bad. I know that there's starvation. I know that there's no water left. I know things are bad. Elisha heard the story, but he said, and one day it's coming. Your blessing, it's common. It's stressful. It's a mental stress. It's a battle, but I prophesy unto you.
prosperity. Isaiah 59 and 19, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord will raise up a standard against him. A flood causes damage. A flood is out of control. You can't stop it. You can do what you must, but it's overwhelming. A flood. The Lord is greater today. I don't care what the name of your flood is today. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to that rock that is higher than I. There's a certain blessing and comfort today to have friends and to have family. And everybody said amen. When you walk through the valley, when you're under siege, it's so good to have a life center that you can come to. Knowing that there's people that love you, that support you, that care for you. Here on Friends Day, on Family Day, we're going to eat some good food here in a matter of minutes. But before we do that, I, I want you to speak faith. I want you to have the understanding that victory is right in front of you. In spite of being under siege by circumstances in life. Despite the pressure. God is with you. Psalms 107 and 108. There's some great scriptures. My goodness, we could talk about this all day. But there's some scriptures that came to my heart and my mind this week that bless me, and I know that it will encourage you. The Bible speaks about an individual in Psalms 107 that their soul is melted because of trouble. They reel to and fro and stagger like a drunken man and are at their wit's end. Can anybody relate to that? Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and He bringeth them out of their distresses. He maketh the storm a calm, so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So He bringeth them unto their desired haven. I love that word. It doesn't matter the storm that you're going through this morning. God wants to bring you to a desired haven. A place of safety. A safe place that we can come to. With the understanding I may be under siege. But there's a desired place that I'm going to reach. Praise God. I want us to stand this morning. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Anybody relate to what I've been preaching about this morning? Can I be honest this morning and say that this week I feel like that I have been under siege? I'm just being honest with you. Our family has faced some things in the past two weeks that have just been overwhelming. And we're human. But we've been besieged. And I want to tell you this, this Friday, it felt like an oppression upon my heart, upon my family, and upon my mind. I want to tell you what I did. You know where me and Sister Hutzbeth ended up? We ended up right here in this sanctuary. On Friday at about 1 o'clock. Besieged. But we had to understand that the walls were still standing. Things were... We're rough. A little bit of pressure on us. Quite a bit of pressure. But can I tell you in the moment of feeling besieged, there was a desired haven. There was a place of peace that I found in God. I had the understanding that Psalms 108 and 1, as I read it, here's what it said. Oh my God, my heart is fixed. In other words, my heart it's steadfast. The psalmist goes on and says, I will sing and give praise. I lifted my hands and praised the Lord Friday. I, I really didn't feel like it, to be honest with you. But when I lifted my hands and started singing and praising unto God, I just felt the peace and an assurance that no matter what I had been besieged by, I'm going to keep singing. Amen? Hallelujah! Did you know some of the greatest lemonade comes forth because you squeeze the lemon? 
some of the best orange juice in Florida. It doesn't just happen. It's squeezed. You don't get the best nut till it's cracked. You don't get the best pecan pie until there's some things that are cracked. You may feel like your heart and soul has been cracked. You may feel like you've been overwhelmed and squeezed to the point of giving up. Can I tell you this morning, there's a friend that's here today saying, get back up. Keep the faith. The prophet's spoken into your life. The word of the Lord has said it. Blessings are coming. Better days are coming. The victory is coming. Can I tell you this morning that our victory did come at 5 o'clock on Friday. And I give God the glory for that. And the praise and the honor that's due unto His name. We're made overcomers by the word of our testimony. And by the blood of the Lamb. Besieged, but you're not defeated. If anybody here this morning feels like you're besieged, and you need a touch of the Lord, Whatever you need from God, can I tell you today that He is here. As we sing this song, I want us to come forward. If you need the Holy Ghost, this is your day. If you need to be baptized in Jesus' name, why put it off? Your blessings today. If you need healing today, I challenge you to come up. And we'll lay hands upon you according to the book of James. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. If you need deliverance today, if you feel like you're besieged and it's helpless, can I tell you this morning, God is reaching for you. He's pulling for you. Hallelujah. He is your friend today on Friends Day. Don't give up. It may seem like your darkest hour. I pray that you would leave this place encouraged in the Lord. Can we respond to the preaching today, to the word of the Lord, and say, God, I need you to help me. Here I am. He's defeated. And we will shout it out.